Hi everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at doing a dispersion effect. It isn't something I would normally do, um, but I have had people ask for it, so um, I do try to make videos and include tutorials that people want to watch, not just what I happen to want to do. Um, so I've got this picture here, which I shot on white seamless, which is ideal for this type of thing. You want something you can cut out easily. Um, and I've took the liberty of making a cutout prior to starting the video, so things are nice and easy. So once you've got your cutout, incidentally I've made this with a quick selection tool and used the refine edge just to get some of the hair details and stuff in there. And I've used the dematting from the layer menu um, to remove kind of the white edge from it so it doesn't stand out too much. So the basic premise of this is we need two cutouts and a background layer. So I'm going to control J on that to make our two cutouts. And this is going to, the top one is going to be our, I'm just going to call that model, this is the more or less intact version. And the one underneath is going to be our dispersal copy. And what I'm going to do, I'm just create another layer in between there, and this is going to be our colour background right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our model layer we're going to add a layer mask on this layer mask we want to keep it white we're going to take a foreground colour of black a brush tool and what we're looking to do is we're going to get one of the splatter brushes um, I would just pick one, this one here looks good, um, that's pretty random in its appearance. I'm going to increase the size that a little bit, I don't increase it too much. Make sure you select it on your mask. Now the last thing you want to do, you don't drag this brush whilst you're on the the mask. I'm just going to turn that back one off so you can see what I'm doing. If you drag it, it just kind of has the effect of wiping everything out. Just need to very slowly take dabs. Um, what I would do is things like ears I would try and take out completely and just make random strokes so you have the kind of dissolving effect around the edges. And you're going to continue that. Go back a little bit. I think I got a bit too much on some parts. I don't worry about getting this um, too different because we're only doing the edge, so we don't want it to be too kind of stand out and obvious that it's too different. You only want a very small effect for this particular layer. When we come to do the actual disperse, we'll want to vary it quite a bit. Just use the edge of your brush if you need to, just to get the effect. And that will do for the purpose of the demonstration. Obviously you've got to be a lot more careful with this than what I am. So that's that layer kind of finished with the moment. And we're going to look at our dispersal. So we're going to get uh, Control t to transfer in first off. And I'm going to stretch this image quite a bit. And what I'm looking at is obviously this, as this disperses, you want it to be similarly coloured in its pixels. So I don't want kind of too many pink pixels before the brown pixels because it will look a bit peculiar. Um, so you just have to be a little bit mindful of uh, of that kind of thing. I'm going to move it up a little bit as well. And I think that will probably do us. I'm just going to return to accept that. Now I'm going to create a layer mask on this layer. Control I to invert it. Now I'm going to use the same brush tool that we had before. But I'm going to swap our foreground colour to white. And we're going to use quite a big brush for this. I'm going to put the first one I 
come down a little bit as it gets a bit closer. Now I'm going to go to the actual image and I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And somewhere around about there is fine. I'm just going to control T again. Stretch that out a bit more. I'm going to go back into the layer mask. Let's put a another couple in there. Now I'm going to change the blending mode of the actual mask. So make sure you are selected on the mask and not the layer to dissolve and the same on the model to dissolve. So we're going to select our model on the dispersal layer and we're going filter liquify. We're going to get our forward warp tool. I'm going to get a selection going that way. Another one. Around there. Now I'll get the twirl tool. And just generally mix some of the pixels up a little bit. If you press on this, uh, what well, if you press on the twirl tool, if you press and hold the mouse button down, it will just turn the pixels directly underneath it very slowly but if you add movement to it as well it kind of mixes them up a little bit and we'll just get the forward warp again Nothing that'll do it for now, so just click OK. This will take a while because I didn't actually reduce the size of this file before I uh, started this. I probably should have done it, it made it a little bit quicker for you. So now we're back in there, we can click on our picture again. Control T to transform. We can probably move this about a little bit so it looks a little bit better. Now what we're going to do is we go to this uh, background layer that's currently black and we're going to fill this with a colour that's more in keeping of the picture um, this nice pink colour so I'm going to go to edit, fill foreground colour And I'm going to create another layer. And I'm just going to put the new layer underneath the coloured background. And I'm going to take the graduation tool, make sure it's on linear. And I'm going to select black to white. I want the black down this side. I want it completely white at this corner. So I'm going to drag from here. I'm going to end around about there, which basically means in front of that section will be completely white. And now I'm going to go to the pink, choose that opacity down, and 
and there you have your dispersal effect. Um, the warp section of this is probably the key to getting what you want and it does take a little bit of practice. Every time you do it will be different. Um, if I just turn those off, this is another one I done earlier on where I've put more thinner swirls in it. So you know it's totally up to you, it's how you want to do it um, and whatever works for you. Um, the start image for this will be downloaded as a PSD file where you'll have the original background image and you will have a cutout image. Um, so if you download the PSD you've got a start file where you can run through pretty much exactly the way we've done it on the tutorial. If you go to the website which is www.carlredshaw.com um, and go to the DSLR training page um, you'll find details on there regards uh, how you can access start images. Thanks for watching, have fun with this, till the next time, bye for now.